I just remember all those. Uh, I'd be at work. I worked at GameStop for eleven years. I don't oh, know. Why. Man, I I did too. I did too. How long did you work there? Uh, only dude. I can only tolerate it for like less than a year. Oh, I literally, man. I've never walked off a job before. I walked off of that one. Yeah. Um, I did too, but I was gonna get fired that day anyway. Um, it was. It's like, funny too because they wanted to promote promote me to store manager and all kinds of shit, and yep. I could not. Every day I walked in, I was like, I noticed my just level of rage was rising every day. And I was like, what's causing this? What is it? And one day I just look up and look around at this sea of aberrant humanity. And I'm just like, it's this, it's this place. (laughs) (laughs) I I walked right the fuck off shift. I left the fucking supervisor holding the bag and I don't feel guilty about it at all. It's fucking terrible. Man, I uh, I think what really ruined it for me is I think because <clears throat> at, at first I enjoyed it like 2009, or 2007, 8, 9, 11, 13 is when it started going downhill. And I kind of enjoyed it. And it was the only thing I ever did. I mean, I quit school in not, or 10th grade, never went to college. And uh, I started working at GameStop when I was like 16. So worked there and um, I enjoyed it, you know, roughly. It was kind of like just a, a spicy drama cake the whole time. I became a store oh, yeah. manager immediately, of course. And the thing that kept me going was every August, we went to Las Vegas for a week and we just partied. It was like lawless and I loved it. And um, that's kind of what I hung on to. But I, I got to the point where there was one or two years in a row where my store ranked so well. I mean, I, I think I was, I ended up being 97th in 2014, I think 97th out of like 6,000 stores back then. Yeah. So it was a big, big deal. And my, pay structure for like three years in a row increased like maximum so at the end of it i was making over 40 grand a year as a store manager in like 2015 um, which is a lot for that that place doesn't even want to pay you over eight dollars here um and they had this program called legacy delete and they would they they would try to terminate employees that had tenure that were making more so they could bring people in making half yep um, they, f- I remember our entire district of, I think it was 12 stores. might've been 16. I think it was 16. Every store manager had been there for like 10 years. And then six months after I was gone, I talked to somebody that still worked as, as a part-timer in one of the stores. Every store manager with the exception of one had been fired within six months. This is the secret of retail. Ladies and gentlemen, yep. you never accept the promotion. No, <laughs> no <laughs> because cause then just- you are what is called middle management and yep. middle management always gets its head on the chopping block first always yep, yep. they laying off somebody it's going to be that guy like best buy they laid off 70 percent of their full-time employees just cut their heads off like a freaking snake i'm gone mm-hmm. overnight and uh the- yeah i know someone who was there for almost 20 years yeah yep. they were started good. started yep. in 2005 and just got just got let go like fucking this is and of course the way the gamestop works they kind of give you a little raise every year just a little bit just a little bit dude that stacks up over 20 fucking years let me tell you yep uh so (laughs) so eventually they caught on they decided to carry the one and they were like we're paying this motherfucker what yep and um i'll never forget it man i've told this story a thousand times of course but i uh every day when i got to the store like every store manager ever um, I would check the store. I'd open the computers, clock in, you know, cause we, we were hourly now because there was that federal law that was, it got passed, but then it got, it didn't pass. I don't remember. And it, it never went into effect. And you made 30, 42 grand a year. You're eligible for, eligible for overtime, no matter what, unless you made that much or more. So GameStop in 2016 went all hourly, all the salary managers were gone. It was all hourly. So I went from making, it was like 38 flat to making like 1670 an hour. And uh, you had to work mandatory overtime to get your actual pay, which was awful. Because if you took a sick day, you lost all your overtime in the pay period, and you would like take a hundred and eighty dollar pay cut every freaking time you did that. Yeah. Um. Which of course they didn't give a fuck. But I would get to the store, clock in, make sure all the walls were good, everything's in alphabetical order. I always kept my stores really, you know, tight. And I would go to the back, work on schedules, and sit in my desk in my manager's office with the door wide open until the store opened. It was eight thirty. Store opened at ten. So that's what everyone did. We all did. What else am I going to do? And uh, the, uh, L, the the HR guy came in who was fired like six months after me. 
um, came in and claimed that I had invited like one of my male employees to like a threesome or something. The most crazy. <laughs> Which of course shit. I had. Of course. No, like it was like a, a big old. I don't. Like, I, that was the craziest shit I ever heard. And I like laughed in his face. I was like, That's obviously bullshit. You definitely don't have any proof, right? And he's like, Well, no. And I'm like, Yeah, of course you don't. And I was like, can I go back to work now? Because like the fucking we it was like in the middle of some busy shit. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, well, there's one more thing. And I was like, OK, cool. Lay it on me. And he's like, we noticed you sit in your desk before the store closed. And I'm like, yeah, every store manager on Earth does that. You know, we when we work on schedules or do anything, we sit at our desk. Of course we do. And he's like, yeah, well, that's actually uh, against policy and you're stealing time. And I'm like, no, that's not true. At, and I looked at my district manager was sitting beside me. I'm like, he's told me to do that. Everybody does that. He does that. We all do that. And he was like, yeah, well, you're not supposed to. And I'm like, yeah, it's a lie. And then he was like, all right, well, let me go talk to my boss. And I just walked out. I was like, yeah, I'm leaving. I'm going home. That was it. Okay. They were going to fire what me. Was, what was the skeegiest business practice you witnessed? Oh in your time? Because I only worked there for a few months. And bro, I literally did a whole video, the GameStop rant. It was one of the first big videos that I did that took off. And uh, I laid it all out. There was all kinds of sketchy shit. I don't, so I worked when the Wii came out and the yeah. 360 and <laughs> PS3s. It was right in that 2007 kind of holiday season. Yeah. And um, I remember the game Lair. Lair was going to come out. Remember that? Yeah. It was like yeah. this dragon flying kind of. And yeah. it was a piece of shit. Nope. It used the PS3 six axis controls. Yeah. And it did not fucking work. It was a turd. I remember, yeah. So GameStop catches wind to the fact that the early reviews for Lair call it out for being a festering shit pile. Yeah. So they send out a company-wide or a district-wide memo, I assume. Uh, Maybe company-wide. But they send out a memo regardless saying, okay, so street date is on Sunday of next week or whatever. We're going to go ahead and break street date. Because we know the early reviews are going to be bad. And we want to sell as many copies of this yeah. gigantic turd before people catch on to the fact that it's fucking terrible. And so we broke Street Date on Lair and they told us to hard sell it to people. Like literally, oh yeah, fucking Lair. It's the greatest goddamn dragon flying game you'll ever fucking play. Yeah. Just to move as many copies before people caught on to how bad it is. Yeah. Fucking that was. Oh really my God. Nice. Dude. I I could go for like 10 hours. Uh, right. There was so many. I mean, my examples are a little extreme. I mean, they weren't really business practice. My old store manager used to leave for four hours and go like hang out with hookers. And um, eventually he got in trouble after like six months. And my district manager, who would never fire hit that guy because he ranked so well. Um, he To give you an, an idea, he was like a 500 pound man, my store manager. I'm um, just a terrible human being. And he, so he got in trouble and he had to stay at the store. So what he did was he just brought hookers to the store and they would come, go into the back with him and they would go into the, the stock room where we kept the Xboxes and the new consoles. And he would just go back there and lock the door for like an hour with hookers in the store. And I, and I, and like three other employees told our regional director about it and said, it's on video. We have all the videotapes and they did nothing. He worked there for another like eight or nine years after that. These are like the Epstein tapes. What the it fuck? It was crazy. It was crazy. I could not believe it. And stuff like that happened all the time with him. But as far as like actual business practice, one of the craziest ones I, I remember um, was Activision paid GameStop to give more payroll to their employees as long as they hit a certain allocation for pre-orders. So of course we knocked it out of the park. It was Black Ops 2 maybe. I don't remember. And We hit it out of the park. Every store got 30 hours. You know, that's a big freaking deal back then. We were all excited. And then Thursday or Friday comes. We get an email. And GameStop's like, we want every, we want your, here's the list of stores in your district. Here's how many hours we want you to cut. And it was exactly what Activision they gave us for money. And we had to cut all those hours. So GameStop just pocketed the fucking money. It was hilarious. Real quick, this is my alt channel. And my main channel is in danger every day of getting banned as a result of talking with these amazing people very candidly. So please do me a favor and subscribe down below. Helps me out a lot. Get the hell on it, dog on it. Um, that was wow. something GameStop did all the time. But dude, my regional director told us to assume people wanted all the add-ons and just add it onto the transaction and don't tell them and only take it off. That was like a, that was like a company wide thing at that point. I mean, the CEO of GameStop just sent out 
uh, Ryan Cohen just sent out, sent out an email, e- e- an email implying that he wants people to still. He's like, I want you to roll your sleeves up and do whatever it takes to make GameStop profitable. And he's talking to middle management, of course. Yeah. And he claims that he's not getting paid. I'm like, dude, he owns like five hundred million dollars worth of the stock. If it increases, he gets paid. You goofy bastard. Like <laughs> me and uh, me and the person who just got let go talk about it all the time. How long do you give GameStop as a company? I uh, give. I don't think they see five years from now. Yeah, right? when in 2019, um, I gave them less than a year, and they. I think they were like six hundred million dollars or one billion dollars in debt. It was like over. It was fucking over. And then the GameStop activist investment thing happened, and they came out of it. And out five years is probably a good accurate estimate now, since they have a billion dollars in free flow cash, but they're losing a billion or they're losing one hundred million to two hundred million per quarter. So yep. within a two years, they're going to be lo- looking for financing. Like, please, God. because it, And it's crazy because they got like over a billion dollars in cash recently, and they've already blown through it because they were – you know what their idea was? I don't know if you like followed it at the time, but when the new executive team came in because Ryan Cohen basically took over by buying The fucking there. 50th new executive team. Yeah. I mean, I remember yeah. when I started working there, they had just gotten a new CEO and – that was because the previous guy was like, this fucking ship is going down. That was fucking 07. Yeah. That was yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah. Their new thing, like a year and a half ago or two years ago now, I don't remember now. It's been so long, right. Um, was they were going to launch a NFT blockchain thing. And they, it, of course, in GameStop fashion, it took them nine months to develop it. Right. So by the time it came out, NFTs were dead. They were Done. gone. So of course they spent millions and millions and millions of dollars and it, they had closed it within three months. They closed it down in October of last year. Everyone who runs that company is like, it's they're like, they would have been a competent CEO if they had gotten on their ideas five years earlier. Like yep. every single time they do this, they did it with the online sales. How late were they to get on a competent website that could sell video games from the internet? It yeah. took them fucking forever. Forever and now no one gets games from the fucking GameStop.com or what? Nobody, absolutely yeah. nobody shops there. They're they're late on fucking everything. Yep, and they're the new executive team will come in and make decisions and be like, man, why don't we sell phones and iPods? And I'm like, oh my god, we did that five. Dude, you remember Zoom? Yeah, they were pushing the fuck. They were Zoom exclusive for a <laughs> fucking Zoom exclusive. That's God. just if you want to comprehend the sheer planet pulverizing incompetence of GameStop Incorporated, the word Zoom spells it all. <laughs> yeah, I remember doing a video on how I would save GameStop. This was years ago, and it was a, it was a real large video at the time. And I, I actually emailed the CEO and everything. <laughs> of course, they they probably never even opened it. But I uh, I was like, man, like you got to do something wild. For one, you got to close ninety percent of the stores. And for the last 10% of stores need to be in really nice areas in downtown and you need to get a liquor license. Like do something and then start serving alcohol and like have fucking parties and just go ham. Like just do what, everything you can to completely change and also change the name of the company. Like because yeah. the, 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 it's nothing but negative. Damaged company. goods. Damaged goods. Yeah. And it's hilarious because they bought all those other companies. Yep. So it's like they could use any of those names, right? They bought fucking Babbage's and yep. EB Games. I know. And- yeah, they could have uh, changed fun co land and all those good. They bought all that shit so they could use any name they fucking want. They could they could go back to look because game thrift stores and whatnot collecting yeah. on the aftermarket is still huge. It's still huge. That used to be GameStop's model in the beginning. You used to be able to walk into a GameStop and walk out with fucking five Nintendo 64 games that were already old by that point for you know fucking 15 bucks or something yeah. like they totally dropped the ball on the only business model that was actually future proofed. Yep. And they would, they made it. I remember I was working there when this happened. I remember used games for like 49 99 for the longest time. The new one was 59 yep. and then they increased the price of the used one to 54 and then 56 99. And I'm like, that's $3 cheaper. What are you doing? And then they took the 10% discount card away. So it's like, why, why would I? It's it's cheaper new at Walmart, let alone used. They do they 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 fumbled all of that. Thank you, Matthew Fortune, for ten gifted memberships. Love you, dude. They just dude, they fumbled it all. They fumbled it all. And uh, I feel like if anybody competent was in power, but the the I met had probably five CEOs while I was there. Yeah. Um. 
And the only one that was competent, that was like a normal ass dude, his name was Paul Rains. And he, he died of cancer a few, like five, six years ago, seven years ago. And, um, I met him and he, I was managing a store in Fort Payne, Alabama. And he was like, Hey, I started my first business in Fort Payne, Alabama. And we talked for like an hour, like at a bar, me and the CEO of GameStop. And everything was still kind of, kind of employee centric. As mm-hmm. soon as he left, because he was getting real sick, guy right behind him took over and that shit went overnight. We had this thing called the, uh, circle of life get implemented over i remember it dude i actually have a copy of the circle of life packet thing yeah the little briefing thing that we and actually i think we shit on it in a video one time once we got this thing i was like what the fuck am i looking at what even is this some of the looney tunes fucking corpo speak in this document do you remember some of this shit yeah dude i remember and um that's when it all went downhill. And I remember there was a packet. It might have been the circle lot packet. And it was yeah. like, um, you you can't re- like uh you can't return a thing with all these stipulations. And the last one said, um, even an act of God or something. It was like the craziest like lawyer speak just to prevent like a return. It was the weirdest shit in the world, man. It was yeah. it was a wild time. It was a wild time. Uh but I'm glad I gotta bust that thing out sometime because I've still got it somewhere in my fucking mounds of papers somewhere in the garage. But that thing blew my mind. I do think we used it in a video one time. It was fucking incredible. I still have um all my we had these little goofy like folder thing that you had to like fill out every day, like who was working and whatnot. I still have like 45 of those and they like date back all the way to like 2007 <laughs> and it has like me and like managers and all this like writing in it and it's yeah. like numbers and shit it was cra- it was crazy we did everything in writing back then and now it's just it's it's crazy and if you if you go to the gamestop reddit it's like the worst place to work at now the people oh, are man. freaking the fuck out like every day and it's even worse even we can imagine but i can't even imagine it's like hard because it was bad when i was there and it, that was that's been five years now yeah, we were, uh, the store I worked at, one of the reasons it was intolerable was it was one of the top five in the country because it was this yeah. big mall and it was constant foot traffic. It was a crush of humanity at all times. And oh. then you get to the holiday season oh. and times 20. Right? Oh. I, just, I just about jumped the counter to get the fuck out of that place when I walked off shift. It was oh. fucking torture. <laughs> yeah, they they let me do the holiday season until before they came in to get oh. try to get rid of me. Now I remember, dude, I'll never forget. It was awful, man. It was the worst because my my ex wife had left mm. like the last week of December, <laughs> and I was working at GameStop, and it was like the most just completely random shit i was like i came home one day she was quiet and i was like hey what's going on because we're we've been like we were like best friends for like 10 years and she's like yeah i don't love you i'm leaving you and i'm like what and then she was gone two days later and then i was going to GameStop <laughs> during the last week of december people screaming our face shoulder to shoulder can't walk dude i did that was that was the closest i ever came to freaking eating a damn bowl of nine millimeter it was, <laughs> it was bowl. with no milk either it just fucking yeah, yeah. God, it was rough. Yeah, but I, dude, I'll never forget driving home that last time, <laughs> and like almost tears because I was so happy. You would think in that situation after all that time, like there would be some some thought of like, damn, it's over. This not sucks. GameStop, bro. bro. It's I like leaving like a POW camp, bro. I was like laughing with like tears in my eyes, and calling all my friends, bro. Guess what? It's fucking over. Woo! <laughs> and I've never thought about it like a- ever since then. I was like, man, I'm so glad that's over. Oh, I'm so glad it's over. Like. And then uh, one day I decided to make a video about GameStop and that, that I became a full-time YouTuber like uh, two months yep. later. 